When fans of My 600 Pound Life tune in, they expect to catch a glimpse of a jaw-dropping life transformation. But once in a while, the patients on the show throw everyone a curveball. From picking fights with show physician Dr. Now to sneaking pizza into the hospital, here are the My 600 Pound Life stars who rubbed us the wrong way. Penny Sager appeared on My 600 Pound Life Season 2, rendering her one of the reality show's OGs. Mmm, it's gonna be good. Food addiction has become my life. But unlike her fellow co-stars that season, Sager didn't comply with Dr. Now's diet and exercise plan. Although she did drop 40 pounds while hospitalized at the beginning of her episode, which qualified her for weight loss surgery, those pounds weren't lost for long. She even managed to gain weight after surgery. Penny must have somebody stinking their food. She figured out how to manipulate the system. Things didn't exactly improve in her follow-up episode either, in which Sager claimed she was doing much better and seeing improvements in her health. Of course, Dr. Now didn't agree, explaining that Sager is addicted to food and is also delusional about any so-called progress. I haven't been on a scale. I don't feel the need to be on a scale because it doesn't matter. As for where Sager is now, Starcasm reported that she keeps a low social media profile and that her photos show no transformation. When viewers first met Shanae Murray, she was deeply devastated over suffering two miscarriages. Given that she was also abused when she was younger, it's no wonder that she turned to food for comfort. Food made me feel better. It made me feel happy. There was a glimmer of hope, as Murray went to Dr. Now to help her get both her life and her weight back under control. But in the end, she was unwilling to stop compulsively overeating. Despite her claims of gaining water weight, something Dr. Now pointed out was clearly not the case. Murray was never approved for weight loss surgery. She continued to eat foods that were not in the program, including a famously illicit pizza, and never dealt with her underlying emotional issues. See what I find. Freddie. What about Freddie? That belongs Freddie. Shanae, the lying need to stop now. Despite leaving Dr. Now's care, Murray set up a GoFundMe for her weight loss surgery. She later filmed herself tackling an eating challenge from her hospital bed. Season 7 of the show brought one of the most controversial stars in its history, Angela Johns. She suffered a tragic backstory involving abuse, drug addiction, and even prison time. As a result of her multiple traumas, Johns turned to food, eventually weighing over 608 pounds by the time she reached out to Dr. Now. But not only was Johns downright combative with Dr. Now, she claimed he was, quote, punishing her. She also tested positive for opiate use and heavy cigarette smoking. On top of all that, she was manipulative to her family members. After losing only 48 pounds and continuing to abuse drugs, Dr. Now gave Johns an ultimatum, go to rehab or end her weight loss journey with him. Johns didn't go to rehab and claimed Dr. Now was lying about everything. I'm going through a lot of changes right now. Bear with that. Okay, you done with your liver tantrum and finish talking? Johns set up a GoFundMe to help with her expenses, despite her non-compliance on the show. Some patients on My 600 Pound Life are so far gone that they are almost completely immobile, unable to care for themselves, and confined to their bed because of their weight. That was the case for James King, who weighed in at 791 pounds when viewers first saw him on season 5. I'm not living life because I'm just trapped in this bed all day. But it's hard to have too much sympathy for King after witnessing his selfish behavior. For one, he had his daughter drop out of school so she could care for him. And his father, who had suffered a stroke, took out a second mortgage to finance his son's journey to Houston. Even after all of that, King refused to change. He was continually enabled by his girlfriend Lisa, who wouldn't stop bringing him food. It was so bad that Dr. Now called Adult Protective Services on her when he found out she snuck food to him in the hospital, even though King was experiencing organ failure. You gonna give me one little rig, bro? I gave you two. Oh. This stuff is good. King started a GoFundMe, which is no longer active. Occasionally, family members or romantic partners appear together on the show, which was the case for Lee Sutton and Renee Kaiser. The couple, who met and fell in love at a bariatric rehab facility, were eating themselves into a dangerous situation. When I'm depressed, I eat. When I'm sad, I eat. When I'm happy, I eat. Food is my drug of choice. And for Renee, too. 
Although they were both able to eventually lose weight and get the surgery, it became evident fairly early on that Sutton had anger management issues. This resulted in him being abusive to his partner both verbally and physically. It got so bad that Dr. Now sent him to see a therapist. Sutton was still being cruel to Kaiser in their follow-up episode, no matter how hard Kaiser tried to be kind and to de-escalate his behavior when his temper flared up. The only time you are ever nice to me or talk to me like a human is when you need or want something. Yeah. The story of Sutton's awful behavior continued off the air, according to Starcasm. Sutton reportedly cheated on Kaiser with a married woman, and Kaiser ended the relationship, per now-deleted social media posts. But it appears as though she took him back in the end. Of all of the stars on My 600 Pound Life, the story of Mercedes Cephas is among the most heartbreaking. After suffering abuse as a child, she began to experience feelings of shame, guilt, and sadness. By the time she was 15 years old, she had packed on 300 pounds and was using food to deal with the trauma. So that's where my life is now, eating all day to forget and to feel good. But when she was confronted about her eating habits by Dr. Now, as an adult, Cephas insisted that she wasn't overeating. She simply claimed she wasn't eating the right foods, even at 773 pounds. When she finally did move to Houston months later, she had dropped just under 50 pounds. By the end of her episode, after she had only lost around 80 pounds altogether, Dr. Now was adamant that she be admitted into the hospital, giving her three days to decide her future. If we don't intervene, she's not going to be able to live much longer. When viewers first met Angela Gutierrez on her episode of the show, it was readily apparent that she had been through a lot. Having lost custody of her children due to child endangerment and attempting to take her own life, Gutierrez lost herself in compulsive overeating. By the time she made the journey to Dr. Now with her ex-boyfriend, she weighed in at 608 pounds. And that's in spite of the fact that she had already gotten weight loss surgery. Every single day of my life is an absolute nightmare. I just feel like I am trapped in this body." But when Dr. Now charged her to lose weight by following his diet plan, Gutierrez faltered. She started missing appointments and eventually dropped out of the program altogether to return to her home in Ohio. She still had one more check-in with Dr. Now, which she did via video chat. In it, she told him that she had lost 120 pounds, to which he responded that she was delusional. No human being should weigh 600 pounds, and I'm over it. Gutierrez updates her Facebook page regularly, but it's unclear if she's lost any actual weight since her episode. Pauline Potter was already infamous before she appeared on My 600 Pound Life. That's because she had herself certified as the world's heaviest woman in the 2012 Guinness Book of World Records, had appeared on Dr. Phil, and had made tabloid headlines when she said she lost weight by getting it on with her ex seven times a day, according to Starcasm. There is not one good thing about being fat. The only good thing that I get out of it is when I'm eating. The biggest highlight of my day is eating. By the time Potter stepped into Dr. Now's office, she weighed 678 pounds, and her health was beginning to suffer because of it. Even so, Potter was resistant, telling Dr. Now that he was overreacting when he suggested hospitalization to get her weight under control. Potter continued to be stubborn even after she had weight loss surgery, repeatedly butting heads with Dr. Now, much to the ire of viewers. You're gonna be mobile and you're gonna get up a move. Oh, later, we later. Oh, yeah. Fortunately, Potter eventually got herself together, and in her follow-up episodes managed to lose 300 pounds with skin surgery on the horizon. She regularly updates her Facebook, where she's looking slimmer and slimmer all the time. While Potter might have been a handful to begin with, it looks like she's turned it all around. When the camera started rolling for Cynthia Wells' episode, her loneliness was palpable. But as a single mom of five children, taking care of her family was becoming more difficult because of her weight. At 610 pounds, Wells was becoming less motivated to leave the house and more exhausted any time she had to move. My life is still dedicated to raising my other children. And I'm getting to a point where I can't physically do that anymore. When it came to following Dr. Now's program, however, Wells wasn't willing to be compliant for very long. She managed to earn herself the reputation of being one of the more bullheaded stars of My 600 Pound Life, at one point insulting Dr. Now's program and returning home to Oklahoma City. By the end of her episode, Wells' weight loss had stalled, and she was deep in denial about her emotional eating habits. I probably eat once a day. Okay, if you're eating once a day, you're gaining four pounds. 
We got a real serious problem with you. Fortunately, things were brighter in her follow-up episode, as well seemed much happier. She continued to lose weight and had gotten down to 361 pounds. While she still struggles with her weight, according to her Facebook page, she's definitely seen some real progress. Lisa Fleming started gaining weight when she was a child, thanks in part to a punishing mother. But it was after she witnessed her brother's murder that her eating truly spiraled out of control. By the time she landed My 600-Pound Life, she weighed over 700 pounds and was confined to her bed. As tragic as her backstory is, it's not what made Fleming so controversial. Instead, it was the discovery that she had maggots living in the folds of her skin. But after losing weight under medical supervision, Fleming returned home and went back to her old habits. Eventually, Doctor Now dismissed her from his program as she refused to comply with his orders. When I'm eating, nothing goes through my mind. I'm happy. Tragically, Fleming passed away at the age of 50 in 2018, according to Page Six. Everything changed for LaShonta White when she was 13 years old and became a young mother. That, on top of the trauma of her parents' divorce and abusive ex-boyfriends, caused her to seek solace and food. She weighed in at almost 700 pounds at the beginning of her episode. I could be upset and I eat my food and it'll soothe my pain. While hers wasn't an atypical story for the people who star on My 600 Pound Life, White's episode left viewers reeling for a variety of reasons. For one, her mother is extremely no-nonsense, frequently criticizing her daughter's weight in blunt terms. I've been concerned, you know. No mother do not like no big fat ass daughter. In turn, White showed a combative attitude toward Dr. Now, and at one point, she even hid fried chicken to avoid being caught eating it. That, on top of her manipulative ways, earned her a spot as one of the most controversial stars of My 600 Pound Life. You made your choice, and your choice is to kill yourself with food. Give me one more chance. No, no, we gave you all the chance you need. But not all was lost for LaShonta White. Dr. Now approved her conditionally for weight loss surgery, providing she could stand on her own two feet. Anyone who's seen the My 600 Pound Life double episode and follow-up episodes featuring Stephen Asante and his brother Justin can attest to the fact that he's quite possibly the most controversial star the show has ever seen. Asante came off as manipulative because of the way that he treated both his family and the medical staff that was trying to help him. These people are really, really, really getting on my last nerve. It's very frustrating how long I have to wait for everything. Asante constantly coerced his father into getting whatever he wanted, including unhealthy foods, and he bullied his brother repeatedly. He even went so far as to steal his brother's painkillers after he had weight loss surgery, in order to fuel his own addiction. Worse yet, he spilled a container of urine, leaving it for a nurse to clean up. Asante even caused Dr. Now to lose it when the doctor threatened to drop him off at a homeless shelter if he didn't get a handle on his behavior. While she's in the hospital, Penny must have somebody stinking their food. She figured out how to manipulate. Asante seems to have calmed down since then, but like most of these reality stars, it's hard to forget just how horrible he once was. Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more list videos about reality TV are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.